calling all detectives. A bandit whose life I helped save showed his gratitude by giving me a message in double talk. That is the situation on this page from my casebook. The casebook of Jerry Browning, private detective. I, Jerry Browning, private detective, have the reputation of being a very tough guy. The reputation doesn't hurt, but the fact that it isn't true sometimes helps. Vic Porter was cornered in a warehouse building on Commerce Street. He couldn't get out, and the police weren't anxious to go in after him. Come on out, Potter, or we'll blow the place apart! I knew Vic Porter. He had the kind of brain that would have made him a rich man, if it could also have kept him honest. As it was, this looked like the end of his road, unless... I turned to the FBI man. Vic Porter's no killer. Give him a chance to surrender without being blown apart and he'll take it. The FBI man smiled thinly. You think so, Browning? Then why don't you go in there and get him? Okay, I will. I darted across the street, shouted, Vic, it's me, Jerry Browning. I'm coming in. The figure that rose from the floor was the once dapper Vic Porter. Browning, I never thought I'd be glad to see you. Where do those feds get all their ammunition? They don't buy it. Come on, Vic, you're my prisoner, and I'll guarantee that you'll live. Huh? That's how Vic Porter was captured. Nothing to it if you know your man. He was convicted of the Union Chemical payroll holdup. Well, that was only the last of a whole series of such robberies. None of the loot was recovered. And the last time I saw Vic... Browning, when it comes to nerve and a square shake, you've got both. But have you got brains? I mean really top-class brains. Listen. M.D. Green. D.X. Case. M.C. Gibbon. Can you remember that? Sure. M.D. Green. D.X. Case. M.C. Gibbon. What's it mean? That you figure out. When Vic Porter was taken by the FBI, alive, he showed his gratitude to me in a peculiar way. M.D. Green, D.X. Case, M.C. Gibbon. You'll figure out what that means, Browning, and you've not only got brains, but you'll be in good shape. Okay, Porter, let's get going. I went on back to my office, reported to Union Chemical that Vic Porter was on his way to jail and had refused up to the last moment to reveal the hiding place of all his loot. That concluded my official connection with the case... All except Vic's cryptic last words to me. That could mean a lot. Or nothing. I wrote the letters and words out on a piece of paper just as I'd heard them. M.D. Green. D.X. Case. M.C. Gibbon. M.C. Master of Ceremonies. Johnny Gibbon was a Master of Ceremonies at Club Rendezvous. Well... In that case, M.D. was probably the abbreviation for Dr. M.D. Green, Dr. Green. My telephone directory told me there was a Dr. Lucius Green in the tower building down the street. Of, uh, what do you complain, sir? I don't complain of anything, Doctor. But the FBI... Dr. Green's color matched his name. He opened his desk drawer and brought out a thick packet of money. I, uh... I've been meaning to declare this for some time. A physician gets paid in cash so much, so easy to lose track of receipts. I assure you I did not mean to defraud the government of income tax. Please take this money. I turned the money over to the Internal Revenue Department, and they took over the good doctor from that point. It was fine for Uncle Sam, but just exactly what it had to do with Vic Porter, I had no idea whatever. Sure, my name is Case. Wilfred Case. Sure, DX is my hobby. I got an amateur radio license, so what's it to you? Mr. Case, I have reason to believe there are some peculiar activities connected with your DX work as an amateur radio broadcaster. Now, the FBI... Wilfred Case looked as though we were about to jump out of the window and only reluctantly thought better of it. You got me. I confess. I've been sending shortwave during restricted hours and on wavelengths I'm not supposed to use. I'll take my medicine like a man. Huh? The Federal Communications Commission handled that one. But I had the feeling I was getting further from rather than nearer to Vic Porter and his secret. And that night, when I went up against Johnny Gibbon, the MC at the club rendezvous, who am I to fight the FBI? 
Okay, so we ain't been giving the patrons top grade scotch. And I tell the boys whose check they can pad. But since when has the FBI been sitting in on penny ante stuff like that? You can strictly search me. But you'll have to take it up with the alcohol commission. Three visits, three cases cracked. What of it? I thought, there sure is magic in those three letters FBI. They make anybody with a guilty conscience think that instead of a name, he'll soon be wearing a number. A number? M-D, D-X, M-C. Maybe these were letters that stood for Roman numerals. M for 1,000, D for 500, M-D, 1,500. And green, instead of a person's name, why not a place name? 1,500 Green Street was an impressive-looking apartment building. There were dozens of letterboxes, but I didn't look for anybody's name. Instead, I did a little more Latin addition. D-X, 510. Apartment 510 was locked, but the name plate under the knocker told me I was at the right place. The name was Virgil Carrier. V for Victor and Carrier, just another way of saying Porter. My badge persuaded the building superintendent to open the door for me. The living room was a book lover's paradise. Floor-to-ceiling bookshelves and glass cases filled with rare editions and sets. I ignored the bookshelves because I remembered case. A case for books. I knew exactly what I was looking for. Gibbon. And there it was, a handsome set of volumes, Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire by Edward Gibbon. The rest was almost too easy, because in chapter 62, page 1100, M.C. for 1100, there was a small key. It was the key to a safety deposit box. Boy, have I got brains, if you give me enough time. At the bank, we opened the box, and inside it was more money than I've ever seen before in my life. It was the loot from all of Vic's holdups, and it was over $400,000. The place was swarming with cops and FBI men and reporters and photographers. One more picture. Just one more picture, please. Hold the stuff up again for another picture. Yeah. All they wanted to photograph was the money and the district attorney holding it. $400,000 all in one great, big, beautiful lump. And who wants to hear about a private detective's brains when he can look at that much money? Just the same, I collected over three grand in reward money. Like I said, tough guys get all the headlines. But what you cash in at the corner grocery is generally what you've earned with your brains. Listen next time to Calling All Detectives. Mystery drama, mystery quiz, and a chance for you to match wits with yours truly, Jerry Browning, Private Detective. 